My first question is, I'm let's let's say I am not a professional athlete, but I'm someone who uh, does some hit classes throughout the week. I go for some runs and I do some resistance training, and so I'm I'm sweating. I'm doing more than a sedentary person, and currently my strategy is to eat a healthy diet and to drink plain water while I'm exercising in the lead up and after. So am I am I leaving some performance, some well-being slash performance on the table by approaching my hydration from that point of view? Absolutely. Absolutely. We see people walking around, you know, with bottles and like, oh, I've got to drink two liters or whatever. And it's these full big bottles, right? And they're trying to drink that before they exercise. And because it's plain water, it stimulates what we call the low barrow receptors. So these are stretch sensors. So if you're drinking all of that water, the body's like, hey, what do I do with this? So it actually instigates you to pee more than you absorb. So you have people who are drinking these two, three liters and they're drinking all day and they have to pee all day. They're not actually absorbing it. And their pee looks clear because it's very dilute, but that is not an indication that they are hydrated. So if we're looking at someone who's just recreationally exercising, right, um, before you go, like an hour before you go into your HIT class, your high sweat class, you just want 500 mils of water with one sixteenth a teaspoon of just normal table salt. So it's like a little dash and maybe a teaspoon of maple syrup. So maple syrup has glucose and sucrose in it. So you have the glucose that helps. And then the sucrose is rate limited and broken down into glucose, which helps, and fructose, which activates another transport mechanism. But it sits around a, a 1% solution. So it doesn't taste salty. It's not overbearing. You don't have to drink a lot, but that fluid is going to be absorbed. If you're drinking plain water with your meal and you have salt in your meal, then plain water is fine. But if you're trying to stay hydrated or purposely pour more water or fluid into your system without the food, you need to have a little bit of sodium and glucose. If you're going to be doing resistance training, plain water is probably adequate because you're not having as much of that hypoxic response. You're not having as much blood flow diversion away from the intestines, away from the gut. So it can handle a little bit more of that pressure differentiation without causing undue gastric distress. Is that the same if you're doing resistance training in a sort of cool, dry environment versus a hot, warm environment where you are potentially sweating a lot more? Well, I'll, I'll put it in perspective. You're going to go to Boulder in like March and you're going to be doing resistance training. So it's very dry. It's very cool. And it's at altitude. You will most likely have to add a little salt to your water because you are still losing a lot of fluid from the altitude. If you're going to go to like New York City in January and it's cold and you're at sea level and you're doing resistance training, then you don't need the salt. But if you're going to go to Hawaii and you're not used to the heat or go to Bali from winter, right, and you're going into either open air resistance training gym or you're going inside where it's not as cool because they're not blasting AC, then yes, you do need to put a little sodium in, in there with your maple syrup because you will be sweating. So about 500 mils an hour before the your exercise, particularly if it's something where you're sort of exerting yourself beyond the kind of standard resistance training session so if someone's out there running 15 kilometers um, or doing a hit type um, training session and that 500 mils has one sixteenth of a teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of maple syrup what about during the the training the exercise itself you can use the same thing um, if it's not over two hours, but if you're going to go out for a long endurance session, then you need a little bit more of the carbohydrate in there. So that's when you're looking at, you know, that two to 3% solution. Um, and then you can get up to the 360 milligram sodium. Depends on if you're acclimatized to the hot environment or not. 
And is there an amount of of sort of fluid intake that you like to give people a, a sort of guide um, during exercise? I I know some people like Andy Galpin talk about looking at your uh, body weight in pounds, I believe, and then he divides it by 30. It gives you uh, a number which is like the ounces of fluid to consume every 15 minutes. It seems like a very specific protocol. Um, very, but, yeah. But if, but if someone's just thinking, okay, so I've, I, I'm hearing you with regards to 500 mils an hour or so before this um, salt carbohydrate solution, um, but during training, whether they're doing resistance training or running, like how frequently should they be taking in fluids and sort of how much? Yeah, I'm, I was just kind of chuckling about the Andy Galpin because old school exercise physiology, you can hear it in your head, a pint's a pound the world around. So two cups for every pound of water you lose. Um, so I think that's where his like calculations and everything come from. But um, everyone's a little bit different, right? You, you have people who are high, have a, a high sweat rate. Other people who don't have a, a, such a high sweat rate might um, hold on to more heat. Uh, we have people whose thirst is muted. Other people who feels really thirsty. So I don't like to say, okay, weigh yourself before and after because it, it is an adequate indication, but it's not really nailing it down because it doesn't take into account what might still be in your gut, how much water was lost through muscle glycogen and liver glycogen utilization. So I just tell people, you know, have your solution. You might have to set an alarm to remind yourself to sip, sip, sip throughout the whole session. It's not every 15 minutes gulp. We want to just make sure that you're taking some in across that, that whole session. Um, I have some of my uh, more extreme endurance athletes use urine-specific gravity uh, tests. So we'll either use a refractometer or we'll use urine dipsticks that you can get like on Amazon that has urine-specific gravity. So you can see where you are before and after. And then you can do a specific intervention and be like, okay, well, I did this specific session and my urine-specific gravity went from one point. 010, which is hydrated to 1.030, which is around two and a half percent dehydrated. And then you do your intervention and you remind yourself to drink. And then all of a sudden your end point is 1.02, which means you've around 1% body water loss. So that's, it's good. Cause what we're trying to do during exercise is slow the rate of body water loss. We're not trying to stay hydrated because you can't. You can't physically drink enough and absorb enough if you have a, if you are going out for a really sweaty session. So we're just looking at how are we slowing the rate of dehydration? What are we drinking to slow that rate down? 